Hello everyone. Today's lecture is based on chapter anatomy of flowering plants. Now what do you understand by the term anatomy? Like in previous chapter we studied about morphology. Now morphology is the uh, external structure of any plant or animal body. Now anatomy is internal structure. So I hope you got the difference between morphology and anatomy. Now we'll talk about tissues and their types. Now what are tissues? Group of similar cells which perform the same function and have a common common origin we call them tissues so these three points that they should be similar they should be performing same function and they should have a common origin or a common source from which they are originating so then we call them tissues so these three points are the uh, key words which define the tissues so similar cells same function and common origin they all satisfy the definition of tissues now tissue are broadly categorized into two types meristematic and permanent meristematic are those tissues which show active cell division whereas uh, permanent tissues are those tissues which have lost the power of division meristematic cells divide and differentiate and finally when they differentiate they have lost the power of division so those meristematic tissue which have lost the power of division we call them permanent tissue now meristematic tissue have been further categorized into apical meristem intercalary meristem and lateral meristem whereas permanent tissue have has been divided into simple and complex tissue based upon the type of cells which are present in them like simple cells are those a uh, simple tissues are those tissues which are made up of only one type of cell and complex tissues are those tissues which are made up of many type of cells like uh, parenchyma colenchyma and sclerenchyma are example of simple tissues and complex tissue ka example is xylem and phloem you might have already studied in class 9 that xylem and phloem both of them are made up of four parts each like xylem is made up of tracheids vessels xylem fiber xylem parenchyma and phloem is made up of sieve tube companion cells phloem fiber and phloem parenchyma now moving ahead we'll talk about meristematic tissues in detail like animal body mein jo growth hoti hai that is uniform throughout the body whereas the, uh, this is not the case in plant body plant body mein jo growth hoti hai that is restricted to certain regions where active cell division is taking place specified regions hote hain jahan pe active cell division hota hai aur utne hi portion mein growth hoti hai that is known as meristems and they are of three types apical intercalary and lateral now apical meristem occurs at the tip of root and stem and it is responsible for the increase in the length of the plant body i'm repeating they are present at the tip of stem and root and they are responsible for the increase in the length of the plant body whereas intercalary meristem occurs between mature tissues or you can say that they are present at the internodes or at the base of the leaf and they occur in grasses and the region generate the parts that have been removed by the herbivores while grazing so they occur in grasses and they regenerate the parts removed by grazing herbivores this is the basic function that you got to know about intercalary meristem now moving ahead we'll talk about lateral meristem lateral meristem occurs in the mature region of root and stem and they uh, produce the woody axis now they are present in those plants where uh, the, the they produce woody axis jo woody trees hote hain like banyan tree and all and unke mature region of root and stem mein ye present hota hai and it is basically responsible for the increase in the girth increase in the girth that is width of the plant body you might have seen that these banyan tree are quite wide so what is the re uh, reason behind their uh, width that is the lateral meristem ki uh, lateral meristem system ki wajah se they are so much wide so if the eucalyptus trees you observe with any tall hote hain so what is the reason this apical meristem which is responsible if you see these banyan tree if you observe them then what is the reason behind uh, them being so wide so it's the lateral meristem now we have categorized meristem into two uh, parts that is primary meristem and secondary meristem based on the time that they appear in the uh, plant's life so primary meristems are the one ones which appear in the life of a plant they appear early in the life of a plant like in the they just uh, start in the initial phase jo meristem plant ke initial phase mein appear karta hai that is uh, primary meristem and they help in the formation of primary plant body ye primary plant body ke formation mein help karta hai the initial phase so apical and intercalary meristem both of them are included in primary meristem whereas secondary meristem they appear later in the life of a plant 
they are, uh, come in the later phase and they are responsible for producing the secondary tissues that is lateral meristem it's not that the banyan tree bilkul ekdam starting se hi it's so wide it takes time to become woody so they appear in the late uh, later in the life of a plant and that is lateral meristem so lateral meristem is included in secondary meristem now there is further uh, division of lateral meristem or you can say some examples of lateral meristem are fascicular cambium interfascicular cambium and cork cambium we'll discuss about them in detail within few minutes now moving ahead there is a point to note an important point about axillary bud now while there is formation of leaves going on and elongation of stem going on the plant may leaves ka formation ho raha hota hai and stem ka elongation ho raha hota hai so that is taking place from the shoot apical meristems so jo shoot apical meristem ke kuch cells bache reh jate hain the remaining left behind cells they constitute the axillary bud wo sare left behind cells shoot apical meristem ke while the formation of leaves and elongation of stem is taking place to wo jo left behind cells hote hain they they form the axillary bud and these axillary bud we've already studied in the previous chapter that they are present in the axil of leaf i hope you know what is the axil of leaf and wo axil of leaf mein present hote hain they are capable of forming a branch or a flower later yahi axillary bud later ya to branch form karti hai ya flower form karti hai so this was something very important now specific regions of apical meristem apical meristem ke jo specific regions hain wo dermal tissue ya यानी कि आउटर टिश्यू फॉर्म करते हैं ग्राउंड टिश्यू मिडिल वन एंड वास्कुलर टिश्यू द इंटरनल वन जो एपिकल मेरिस्टम होता है उसी के रीजन ड्यूरिंग फॉर्मेशन ऑफ प्राइमरी प्लांट बॉडी दे फॉर्म द डर्मल टिश्यू द ग्राउंड टिश्यू एंड द वैस्कुलर टिश्यू okay now let's move to the next uh, point that is a comparative analysis between parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma we'll have a comparative analysis between the three and within few minutes you will be sure about what are the basic differences and what are the characteristic features so parenchyma ko the other name that has been given that is universal tissue we call it universal tissue because it's present almost everywhere in the plant and collenchyma we address it as living mechanical tissue living mechanical tissue because it provides mechanical strength and sclerenchyma is addressed as dead mechanical tissue now cell wall of parenchyma is made up of cellulose so there is nothing new because plant ki cell wall is made up of cellulose so there is nothing new ki parenchyma ki cell wall cellulose ki bani hui that is something general now collenchyma cell wall is made up of cellulose hemicellulose and pectin this is something additional that we have got to learn that collenchyma ki cell wall is made up of cellulose hemicellulose and pectin and sclerenchyma as we've already studied that it is a dead mechanical tissue so something which is dead Dead, it is made up of lignin. Lignin will always be present wherever there is dead tissue. So the cell wall is lignified. Lignin is present. So the cell wall of sclerenchyma is made up of lignin. Now the function. Parenchyma help in photosynthesis and the basic function is storage and secretion of food. Ye food ke storage se uh, concerned hota hai. And the collenchyma provides mechanical strength. That is why we call it mechanical tissue. And it provides flexibility to the growing parts. So it provides flexibility to the growing parts. You might have seen while wind uh, is there and um, these uh, trees and these plants they sway in the air. So how are they able to sway? How are they able to move? so that is the flexibility which is provided by collenchyma and sclerenchyma provides mechanical strength to the plant body only this is the only function they perform they provide mechanical strength to the plant body now some uh, characteristic features of parenchyma parenchyma ko characteristic feature is that you can identify them if you have a diagram in front of you and you can see intercellular spaces intercellular spaces agar aapko visible hai so that tissue is particularly parenchyma because parenchyma parenchyma have intercellular spaces cells ke beech mein there is intercellular spaces now collenchyma ka characteristic feature that is they have cellulose thickening at the corner of each cell if you can see the diagram there are cellulose thickening at the corner of each cell at every corner of each cell there are cellulose thickening so from these cellulose thickening you can identify that it is collenchyma and it is a characteristic feature of collenchyma now sclerenchyma if you observe there are two types of sclerenchyma of fiber and sclerites and sclerites are also known as stone cells and they provide uh, rigidity to the 
pulp of the fruit and uh, uh, these uh, sclerenchyma ka characteristic feature is that they have few or numerous pits you can see these openings in both of the uh, type of sclerenchyma cells these opening these openings so these are pits so they have few or numerous pits so this was all about uh, a comparative analysis about parenchyma collenchyma and sclerenchyma now point to note that these sclerids or stone cells they provide grittiness to the pulp of fruits like guava pear and sapota fruit walls of nuts seed coats of legumes and leaves of teas so the grittiness to the pulp of fruit is provided by these sclerid or stone cells of sclerenchyma i hope this much was clear now let's proceed and talk about the other point complex tissue that was all about simple tissue now we'll talk about the complex tissue complex tissues are made up of more than one type of cell now these work together as a unit this is important although they are made up of more than one type of cell but they work together as a unit xylem and phloem constitute and make up the complex tissue now xylem is a conductive tissue for water and minerals phloem is the conductive tissue for uh, food material from the leaves to the other plants and we already know that xylem is made up of tracheids vessels xylem fiber xylem parenchyma and one important point is that uh, all the components of xylem are dead except xylem parenchyma xylem ke jitne bhi uh, parts hain wo sare dead hote hain except xylem parenchyma and tracheids and vessels are the main water transporting element tracheids or vessels main water transporting element hote hain and radial conduction of water water ka jo radial conduction hota hai that takes place by ray parenchymatous cells so this was all about xylem that they are uh, the conducting tissue for water and minerals they are made up of tracheids vessels xylem fibers xylem parenchyma sare so, components dead hote hain sirf xylem parenchyma is the exception jo ki living hota hai and main water transporting elements are tracheids and vessels and jo radial conduction hota hai water ka that takes place by ray parenchymatous cells now to coming to phloem phloem are the conducting tissue for food material that is synthesized from the leaves and from the leaves it is transported to the other parts of the plants and phloem is made up of sieve tube companion cells phloem fibers and phloem parenchyma a mature sieve element that is uh, a sieve element they possess cytoplasm and a large vacuole but they lack nucleus jo mature sieve tube hota hai sieve element hota hai uske paas cytoplasm hota hai large vacuole hota hai but they don't have a nucleus so sieve tube ka jo bhi function hai wo control karne wala koi nahi hota hai so for that their function is controlled by the nucleus of companion cells which are situated just next to the sieve tube so they help take the help of the nucleus of companion cells that is why sieve tubes are helped by companion cells because they have cytoplasm they have large vacuole but they lack nucleus so the nucleus uh, which controls the function of a cell is essential for the functioning so is uh, in such a case what happens that the function of sieve tube are controlled by the nucleus of companion cells now phloem parenchyma is absent in most of the monocots this is something very important the note point that phloem parenchyma monocots may mo mostly absent hota hai phloem fibers are generally absent in primary phloem and found in secondary phloem so phloem parenchyma monocots mein absent hai phloem fibers absent in primary phloem and secondary phloem mein they are found at maturity what happens is jo phloem fibers hote hain they lose their protoplasm and protoplasm is the living component jab protoplasm lose kar dete hain so they become dead and the phloem fibers of these jute flax and hemp they are commercially used they are used commercially now moving ahead we'll talk about arrangement of primary xylem endarch and exarch condition you will uh, learn the importance of these terms while we'll study the transverse section of root and stem and before that before discussing the transverse section we need to know what these terms mean endarch and exarch ka matlab kya hota hai endarch when protoxylem lies towards the center and metaxylem lies towards the periphery jo first form xylem hota hai usse hum protoxylem bolte hain aur jo baad mein uh, develop hone wala xylem hota hai jo primary xylem se obtain hota hai hum usse metaxylem bolte hain so protoxylem and metaxylem is clear now endarch condition kya condition hoti hai when protoxylem lies towards the center jab protoxylem center yani ki pits ki side lie karta hai and metaxylem पेरिफेरी यानी कि बाहर की तरफ लाई करता है 
so that is end arch condition end arch condition means protoxylem towards the center that is inside and metaxylem towards outside that is periphery an exarch condition means just the opposite that the protoxylem lies towards the outside that is periphery and metaxylem lies towards the center that is pit so you can just uh, make a trick arch end arch so arch ko you can uh, assume it to be protoxylem arch ko aap protoxylem assume kar lo now end arch means protoxylem inside and exarch means protoxylem outside now this is a trick that you can use that end arch mein arch ko you assume protoxylem ki arch ka matlab protoxylem hai and it is inside because end arch and to agar protoxylem inside hai to metaxylem outside hoga and exarch mein what will happen protoxylem is outside towards the periphery and metaxylem is towards inside so this was an a trick to help you out in remembering endarch and exarch condition now endarch condition is observed is found in is observed in stems and exarch condition is found in roots okay endarch condition in stem exarch condition in roots protoxylem towards inside or center and metaxylem towards periphery endarch condition protoxylem towards the periphery and metaxylem towards the center that is exarch condition now talking about protofloem and metafloem as i've already told you between uh, protoxylem and uh, metaxylem usi tarah protofloem aur metafloem bhi hote hain jo first form primary phloem hai usi hum protofloem bolte hain jo later form primary phloem hai usi hum metafloem bolte hain protofloem mein protofloem mein they have a narrow sieve tube and metafloem they have a bigger sieve tube now important note point that gymnosperm lacks vessels in xylem and sieve tube and companion cells in phloem instead they have albuminous cells and sieve cells so this is very important ki gymnosperms me xylem ka kaun sa component absent hota hai the vessels are absent in xylem and uh, phloem ka kaun sa component absent hota hai sieve tube and companion cell instead unke paas kaun se cells present hote hain inki jagah par albuminous cells and sieve cells are present instead of those which are not present there now the tissue system we'll discuss the epidermal tissue system first epidermal tissue system is made up of epidermis stomata and epidermal appendages means epidermal thread like structures that is root hairs and trichomes so epidermal tissue system basically epidermis layer ka bana hota hai stomata ka bana hota hai and epidermal appendages like the uh, root hairs and trichomes in sab ye sab constitute karte hai epidermal tissue system now uh, talking about uh, epidermis in detail that it is a single layer parenchymitis it is single layer it is parenchymitis parenchyma ki bani hoti hai ye layer single layer hoti hai epidermis on the outside epidermis is covered by a thick waxy layer that is known as cuticle epidermis outside pe covered hoti hai by a wax layer that is known as cuticle and this cuticle is a waterproof layer it prevents the loss of water and it is absent in roots kyunki roots mein there is abundance of water so it's not required whereas stem mein kyunki transpiration ki condition hoti hai transpiration hone lagta hai kyunki wo outside exposed part hota hai so they are present uh, there outside they are present in the stem the leaves so epidermis ke me jo uh, waterproof layer present hoti hai that is cuticle which prevents the loss of water and it is absent in roots that was all about epidermis it is single layer it is made up of parenchyma now coming to stomata something we have been studying since primary classes that stomata are there which helps in gaseous exchange now there are tiny apertures or tiny pores which are present on the leaf epidermis ye leaf ke epidermis pe present hone wale tiny pores hote hain and they are made up of two kidney shaped cells kidney shape or bean shaped cells ke bani hote hain which are known as guard cells and two guard cells enclose the stomatal pore and this aperture together constitute the stomata so guard cells enclosing the stomatal pore they constitute stomata these kidney shape or bean shape cells guard cells make up the stomata and basic function of stomata is transpiration loss of water and gaseous exchange basically transpiration ko function mein include nahi karte hain but what happens while uh, these stomata are helping in gaseous exchange they are open and helping in gaseous exchange then water makes its way through these openings water apna uh, rasta bana leta hai and it starts moving out of the plant
body. So that is uh, transpiration is also taking place simultaneously with the help of stomata. Now opening and closing of stomata is something which is regulated or controlled by the guard cells. When guard cells uh, are turgid, that is uh, they uh, are turgid, they swell up due to absorption of water, then the stomata opens and when they are flaccid, then the stomata closes. So opening and closing of stomata is regulated by the guard cells. Now guard cells, we've studied that they are kidney shape or bean shape, but they, there are some exceptions. Guard cells are dumbbell shaped in grasses. Grasses may, they are not kidney shape or bean shape, they are dumbbell shape. And the outer wall of guard cells, that is some, uh, the wall away from the stomatal pore, jo stomatal pore se bahar ki taraf hoti hai, which is away from the stomatal pore, us wall ko hum outer wall bote hai, and which is towards the stomatal pore, us wall ko hum inner wall bote hai. So the outer wall of guard cell is thin. Jo away from the stomatal pore hoti hai, wo outer wall thin hoti hai, lekin jo towards stomatal pore, jo uh, guard cell ki wall hoti hai, the inner wall that is highly thickened. Wo highly thickened hoti hai, kyunki usse opening or uh, closing of stomata ko regulate karna hota hai. So this is again important point that the outer wall of guard cell that is away from the stomatal pore that is uh, thin and the inner wall that is towards the stomatal pore that is highly thickened. Now, few epidermal cells which are in proximity or in vicinity of guard cells means guard cells ke around jo thode baut epidermal cells hote hain wo specialize ho jate hain apne shape or structure mein and they are known as subsidiary cells. Very important, abhi tak till now, till class 10th we have studied that there are guard cells, there are epidermal cells. We haven't studied ki guard cell ke around uske aas paas jo bhi cell, epidermal cells hote hain, wo specialize ho jate in their shape and structure and they are known as subsidiary cells. Now the other constitute, uh, the part which constitute epidermal tissue system that is epidermal appendages, trichomes and root hairs. Trichomes or root hairs, dono hi epidermis may present thread like structures hai. Now trichomes, epidermal hairs hai, which are present on the stem. Agar stem may epidermal hairs present hai, we call them trichomes. Or agar root may epidermal hairs present ho hai, then we call them root hairs. So they are one of the same thing, kyunki wo epidermis ka hi modification hai, wo epidermis se hi arise kar rahe hai, but the source of origin is different, that trichomes are epidermal hairs on the stem, and root hairs are the epidermal hairs on the root. And trichomes multicellular hote hai, whereas root hairs are unicellular. Trichomes water loss ko prevent karte hai due to transpiration. Trichomes water ka loss ni hone dete hai, transpiration ki wajay se jo water loss ho raha hai, se rukte hai. Whereas root hairs absorb water and minerals from the soil. This is the basic function that we have been studying. Now this was all about epidermal tissue and now we'll talk about the ground tissue. As we've already studied ki jo apical meristem ke jo cells hote hain, wo hi epidermal tissue, ground tissue or vascular tissue form karte hain. So apita we've studied about epidermal tissue, now we are moving ahead and we'll talk about the ground tissue. So all the tissue except the epidermis and vascular bundle, epidermis outer tissue hai, Vascular bundle, inner tissue hai. Unke beech mein jitne bhi tissues lie karte hai, unhe hum ground tissue bolte hai. So, they constitute the ground tissue. The tissues except the epidermis and the vascular bundle make up the ground tissue. Now, in root and stem, parenchyma makes up the cortex, pericycle, pith and medullary rings. Now, these are the layers that are present in ground tissue. Ground tissue mein jo jo layers present hoti hai, we are talking about them, ki root and stem mein cortex, pericycle, pith or medullary rays ko kon banata hai, parenchyma cells ke bane hoti hai, ye sari layers. And in leaves, jo mesophyll cells hoti hai, wo ground tissue banata hai. So basically, root and stem mein ground tissue banate hai, parenchyma and leaves mein jo ground tissue banate hai, wo kaun se cells hote hai, mesophyll cells. So what do you uh, got to know about ground tissue? That there is one outer tissue, one inner tissue. Means epidermis outermost hai, vascular bundle innermost hai. Unke beech mein jo bhi cells lie kar rahe hai, they make up, they constitute the ground tissue. Now root and stem mein jo ground tissue form hoti hai, ground tissue mein alag alag layers hoti hai, that is cortex, then pericycle, then pits, Endodermis is also there, medullary rays is also there. Wo sari layers kis ki bani hoti hai? Basically parenchyma, kuch modifications aur bhi hoti hai. But, they are, but it's parenchyma which basically does that. And leaves mein jo ground tissue hota hai, that is made up by mesophyll cells. Leaves mein jo ye ground tissue hota hai, means epidermis or vascular tissue ki beech ki jo cells hota hai, wo mesophyll cells ki bani hoti hai. 
Now moving ahead and talking about vascular tissue. Xylem and phloem together constitute the vascular bundle. Ye xylem and phloem ek saath milke constitute karte hain vascular bundle. And vascular bundle are of various types. They are of different types: radial, conjoint, collateral. So let's talk about different different arrangement of these vascular bundles. Alag alag arrangement ke baare mein study karte hain. So xylem and phloem together, jab hum unko address karna chahte hain, we we'll call them vascular tissue. If I say vascular tissue, it means I'm talking about xylem and phloem. Now vascular bundle is uh, of various type. That is radial. जब जाइलम और फ्लोएम ऑल्टरनेट मैनर में अलग अलग रेडियस पे प्रेजेंट होते हैं लाइक जाइलम का ये रेडियस है लाइक इफ यू कैन ऑब्जर्व इट इन द डायग्राम दैट जाइलम इज प्रेजेंट एट अ डिफरेंट रेडियस एंड फ्लोएम इज प्रेजेंट एट अ डिफरेंट रेडियस सो व्हेन दे आर प्रेजेंट इन ऑल्टरनेट मैनर लाइक दिस इज जाइलम दिस इज फ्लोएम जाइलम फ्लोएम जाइलम फ्लोएम जाइलम फ्लोएम सो दे आर प्रेजेंट इन ऑल्टरनेट मैनर दे आर अरेंज इन ऑल्टरनेट मैनर अलोंग डिफरेंट रेडियस अलग अलग रेडियस पे ऑल्टरनेट मैनर पे प्रेजेंट होते हैं देन सच अरेंजमेंट और सच टाइप ऑफ वैस्कुलर बंडल इज नोन एज रेडियल वैस्कुलर बंडल and radial vascular bundle ki condition is most probably observed in roots so the trick to learn is r square radial condition roots mein radial vascular bundle in roots now conjoint conjoint mein xylem and phloem are situated along the same radius now you can see the difference ki radial mein xylem and phloem were arranged in alternate manner at the different radius alag alag radius pe present hai but conjoint condition mein xylem and phloem are present along the same radius now conjoint mein you have two conditions either we are having conjoint open or conjoint close Conjoint open vascular bundle hota hai means cambium mm -hmm. is present between xylem and phloem. Xylem or phloem, xylem and phloem ke beech mein ek cambium ki ring present hoti hai. If cambium ki layer present hoti hai, then we call it conjoint open vascular bundle. Mm -hmm. And agar there is no cambium between xylem and phloem, then we call it closed conjoint closed vascular bundle. Now, dicot stem has conjoint open condition in vascular bundle, whereas monocot stem may conjoint closed condition होती है vascular bundle की. So, xylem and phloem together they make up the vascular bundle. Vascular bundle are of different types: radial, conjoint, collateral. Now, collateral has not been discussed here, so we'll talk about radial and conjoint. Endodermis is made up of uh, this is the innermost layer of cortex means cortex जहाँ end होता है वहाँ पे endodermis layer होती है and this innermost layer that is single layer is made up of barrel shaped cells and these uh, barrel shaped cells में tangential और radial walls पे there is a deposition of suberin suberin का deposition होता है इसकी walls पे in the form of Casparian strips so this is something very important कि जो cortex के बाद सबसे innermost layer होती है that is endodermis and endodermis is made up of barrel shaped cells and these barrel shaped cells इनकी walls पे suberin की coating होती है suberin का deposition होता है and that deposition is known as Casparian strips तो basically Casparian strips होती है endodermis में और ये Casparian strips they are nothing but the deposition of suberin in the endodermis layer Now, endodermis ke baad, moving ahead, we have pericycle. Now, pericycle, this layer, jo endodermis ke baad dikhai deti hai, that is made up of also parenchyma cells. Root mein, uh, we have studied ki root mein jitna bhi ground tissue hai, wo parenchyma cells ka bana hua hai. So, this was, cortex was made up of parenchyma. Now, pericycle is also made up of parenchyma cells. And, फॉर्मेशन ऑफ लेटरल रूट्स जो लेटरल रूट्स निकलती है मीन्स एक प्राइमरी थिक रूट होती है उसके अगल बगल जो लेटरल रूट्स निकलती हैं और बास्किला कैम्बियम होता है ड्यूरिंग द सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ वो सब कुछ इसी सेल से होता है पेरीसाइकिल की लेयर से होता है सो पेरीसाइकिल लेयर इज मेड अप ऑफ पैरन कायमा सेल्स एंड द फॉर्मेश of roots roots ka formation or vascular cambium ka formation during secondary growth takes place through these cells only now we've done we are done with epidermis then cortex then endodermis then pericycle now there is the vascular bundle that is xylem and phloem so there uh, th uh, this is root and root mein jo vascular bundle ki condition hoti that is radial if you can see these are xylem and these are phloem so alternate conditions mein present hai 
phloem xylem phloem xylem phloem xylem phloem xylem so they are present in alternate condition and along the different radius so this is which condition of vascular bundle that is alternate condition may present here in different radius they are radial radial vascular bundle here and they have exarch condition now if you can see xylem xylem exarch condition may present here means ex arch arch ko hum protoxylem assume kar le to means protoxylem towards the periphery and metaxylem towards the center that is pith ki taraf center mein pith hota hai jo center mein aapko uh, portion dikh raha hai that mb portion that is pith so metaxylem center ki taraf hai and protoxylem towards the periphery protoxylem sabse bahar ki taraf xylem sabse andar ki taraf center ki taraf that is pith so this is showing the vascular bundles are showing radial condition and have exarch condition also and they have 2 to 4 xylem bundles they have 2 to 4 xylem bundles basically the number is very important so dicot me xylem bundles are 2 to 4 radial condition and exarch condition is there now pith you can see is very small and it is also made up of parenchyma cells so basically jo cheez humne yahan par samjhi that is that the outermost layer is epidermis and epidermis is uh, having unicellular root hairs then you have cortex to parenchyma cells ke bane and inke beech mein intercellular spaces hai that is but obvious because parenchyma cells have intercellular spaces now moving ahead, there is endodermis jo cortex ke baad sabse innermost layer hoti hai and this is made up of barrel shaped cells barrel shaped cells ki walls pe suberin ka deposition hota hai usi deposition ko hum casperian strips bolte hain of endodermis and then the innermost layer that is pericycle pericycle is also made up of parenchyma cells ye lateral roots ka aur vascular cambium ka formation karti hai during secondary growth and then we have the vascular bundle that is xylem and phloem kyunki yahan pe xylem aur phloem alternate condition mein present hai that is why we call them radial and protoxylem bahar ki taraf hai metaxylem pith ki yani ki center ki taraf hai so this is exarch condition and they have 2 to 4 xylem bundle finally jo pith hai that is small and parenchymitis the sequence you have to remember that it is epidermis cortex endodermis pericycle vascular bundle and pith now moving ahead we'll talk about another transverse section that is ts of monocot root so dicot root we have already studied now we'll talk about about monocot root now anatomy is very similar to the dicot root whatever dicot root was having the same sequence is there we'll only study the difference that the different points that this monocot root is having jo basic structure hai wo almost same hai the placement of layer is also the same but we'll study ki actually dicot root mein aisa kya dicot root mein aisa kya nahi hai jo monocot root mein special present hai so anatomy is similar to the dicot root it has epidermis cortex endodermis pericycle vascular bundle and pith whereas jahan pe uh, dicot root mein 2 to 4 xylem bundles the yahan pe 6 xylem bundles are seen means these uh, dark colored uh, black colored circles that you can see these are xylems so basically there are six uh, there are more than six xylem bundles and wahan pe in dicot root there were two to six xylem bundles monocot may more than six xylem bundle that is polyarch condition now pith is large and well developed in dicot root pith small or inconspicuous tha and monocot root mein jo pith hai that is large and well developed now monocot roots secondary growth undergo nahi karti hai whereas uh, you have studied just within few minutes that uh, dicot root mein jo pericycle hote hain wo uh, secondary growth mein help karte hain so monocot root mein kahin se bhi secondary growth nahi hoti hai so this is all about transverse section of monocot root the placement the arrangement of layer is same jo difference hai wo ye hai ki dicot root mein only 2 to 4 xylem bundles exist monocot root mein there are more than 6 xylem bundles pith wahan pe small thi yahan pe large hai well developed hai wahan pe secondary growth ho rahi hai dicot root mein monocot root they do not have any under they do not undergo any secondary growth वहाँ पे कोई सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ नहीं होती है सो इफ यू कैन ऑब्जर्व द स्ट्रक्चर केयरफुली एंड इट्स ऑलमोस्ट द सेम क्योंकि रूट है तो यहाँ पे भी रेडियल कंडीशन ही शो हो रही है जस्ट हैव अ लुक फ्लोएम जाइलम फ्लोएम जाइलम फ्लोएम जाइलम एंड यू कैन सी द प्रोटोजाइलम इज टूवर्ड्स द पेरीफेरी मेटाजाइलम टूवर्ड्स द सेंटर तो अगेन यहाँ पे भी वैस्किला बंडल कौन सी कंडीशन शो कर रहे हैं दैट इज एग्जाच कंडीशन सो रेडियल एंड एग्जाच कंडीशन यहाँ पे भी एग्जिस्ट कर रही है बट जो डिफरेंसेस थे वो हमने discuss kar liye hain now we'll move uh, and uh, talk about transverse section of dicot stem 
Now the dicot stem, transverse section of dicot stem, if you can see the diagram, then a transverse section of dicot stem mein jo uppermost layer hai, jo sabse upar wali layer hai, that is the epidermis, this is covered with a waxy layer cuticle and stem mein jo hair like structures present hote hai, that is epidermis uh, ke jo hairs hai stem mein, that is trichomes. So you can see ki dicot stem mein sabse upar epidermis ki layer mein cuticle presence hai and hair like structures trichomes are present. Now moving ahead, cortex ki layer hai and cortex ki layer dicot stem mein three parts mein divided hoti hai and three subzones mein divided hoti hai, jo outermost hoti hai, wo hypodermis hoti hai and jo innermost layer hoti hai, that is endodermis. So now jo uh, outermost layer hypodermis hai, that is made up of cholenchyma cells and uh, the innermost layer endodermis, that is made up of parenchyma cells. So hypodermis cholenchyma or uh, endodermis parenchyma cells ke bane hoti hai. Then moving towards endodermis endodermis yahan pe jo endodermis layer hai like previously humne dicot uh, root mein padha tha ki endodermis layer was uh, having uh, was having deposition of suberin aur ki asparian strips bol rahe the usko yahan endodermis of uh, dicot stem mein bhi dicot stem ke endodermis mein bhi deposition hai it is rich in starch grain to hum is layer ko starch sheath bhi bolte hain so please do remember both the things Dicot's root mein endodermis uh, ki layer ko hum Casparian strips bhi bote hai jaha suberin ka deposition ho raha tha and Dicot's stem mein hum endodermis layer ko uh, starch sheath bhi bote hai because this layer is rich in starch grain. Now endodermis ki baad there is pericycle and pericycle abhi tak we have studied ki pericycle parenchyma ki bani hoti thi but Dicot's stem mein pericycle is made up of patches of sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma ke patches ki bani hoi hai. Then uh, after pericycle we have vascular bundle now the vascular bundle is arranged in a ring. Ring may arranged here vascular bundle. Is me sir vague section dikhaya, otherwise pura transfer section nahi hai hai. So this is just uh, like a, a portion of a, a circular uh, section. So this uh, is not able to depict the proper arrangement, whereas vascular bundle yaha pe dicot stem mein ring mein arranged hai and they are conjoined open, conjoined open uh, hai vascular bundle how? See, uh, this is phloem and this is xylem. And xylem or phloem ke beech mein cambium ki ring present hai. So obviously, jab wo same radius pe present hoti hai, to conjoint condition hoti hai. Or beech mein agar vas cambium ki ring hoti hai, to hum usse conjoint open condition bolte hai. So the vascular bundle are arranged in ring. They are conjoint open with exarch protoplasm. Exarch condition aise hai ki aap agar uh, metaxylem ko dekhoge, that metaxylem is towards the periphery. And protoxylem is towards the center, pitch ki taraf ya center ki taraf uh, me, uh, protoxylem hai aur metaxylem jo hai wo uh, towards the periphery hai. So basically yaha pe endarch condition ho rahi hai and endarch condition is seen in dicot stem. So stem mein endarch condition thi aur root mein exarch condition thi that is what is happening here only and then finally pith here so pith here is large and well developed parenchyma cells ka bana hua and if made up of parenchyma then it is having intercellular spaces now we'll talk about in detail for monocot stem hum monocot stem ke bare mein detail mein baat karenge now monocot stem uh, is uh, having uh, patches now monocot uh, stem mein jo hai wo uh, Monocot stem mein everything is same as uh, in uh, dicot stem. Now here jo sclerenchyma hai, uh, the, the hypodermis is there. Jo hypodermis hai that is made up of uh, sclerenchyma. Or vascular bundle ring mein arranged nahi hai. Jaisi dicot stem mein ring mein arranged thai. Vascular bundle scattered hai. If you can see they are scattered. And they are conjoined close type of vascular bundle. Means jo xylem phloem hai. Unke beech mein koi cambium ki ring present nahi hai. Like this is uh, phloem and this is xylem. So xylem or phloem ke beech mein koi cambium ki ring present nahi hai. So conjoined closed condition hai. And jo peripheral vascular bundles hai. Means scattered condition mein hai. To jo peripheral hai. They are uh, smaller than the central ones. Jo central ki taraf hai. Wo zyada badi vascular bundles hai. Jo periphery pe outside present hai. Wo jo uh, chote hai. So peripheral vascular bundles are smaller than the central ones. And vascular bundle mein water containing cavities hai. They are having water containing cavities and these cavities are known as lysigenous cavities 
एंड इन सब में फ्लोएम पैरन काइमा इज एबसेंट सो फ्लोएम पैरन काइमा ऑल टूगेदर इसमें एबसेंट है सो दीज वर दी पॉइंट दैट यू नीडेड टू नो अबाउट एस ऑफ मोनोकॉट स्टेम नाउ विल टॉक अबाउट ट्रांसफर सेक्शन ऑफ डायकॉट लीव नाउ वील हैव अ लुक एट द ट्रांसफर सेक्शन ऑफ डायकॉट लीव Now the outermost layer is epidermis again. Now epidermis of the upper surface. Upper surface की जो epidermis होती है उसे हम add axial epidermis बोलते हैं और lower surface की जो epidermis होती है उसे हम add axial epidermis बोलते हैं. So the upper epidermis that is add axial and the lower epidermis that is add axial. तो epidermis dicot leaf में जो upper वाली epidermis होती है it bears more stomata, whereas epidermis on the lower surface may even lack stomata. So upper वाली epidermis में stomata ज़्यादा होते हैं and lower वाली epidermis में stomata absent हो सकते हैं and वो दोनों ही epidermis में cuticle present होती है. Now mesophyll mesophyll tissue जो होता है mesophyll tissue में the between upper and lower epidermis it contains chloroplast. The tissue between upper and lower epidermis contains chloroplasts and uh, it carries out photosynthesis and it, this uh, mesophyll cells is made up of parenchyma. Now, ye mesophyll cells parenchyma ki bane hoti and parenchyma are of two types, spongy parenchyma and palisade parenchyma. Ye jo closely attached hai, compactly arranged hai, unhe hum palisade parenchyma bolte and they are elongated and parallel to each other. Whereas spongy parenchyma loosely arranged hai and they are oval or round, having air cavities in ke beech mein air cavities they are loosely arranged here so they have air cavities in between and they are oval now uh, vascular system jo vascular bundle hai it is mainly observed on the veins aap leaves ki veins observe kar chuke in the previous chapter you have seen the midrib the veins so vascular bundle basically veins ya midrib pe observe hote hain and size of vascular bundle are dependent on the size of veins ki veins ka size jitna zyada hoga vascular bundle utne zyada bade honge and vascular bundles are surrounded by a layer of thick walled bundle sheath cells to so, dicot leaf mein jo vascular bundles hote hain they are surrounded by a layer of thick wall bundle sheath cells now we'll talk about in detail of our monocot leaf monocot leaf ko hum isobilateral bolte hain and uh, monocot uh, dicot leaf ko hum dorsi ventral bolte hain based on their position so there is a uh, D square M I B. There is a trick D square M I B which says the dicot dorsi ventral monocot isobilateral and monocot leaf may bulliform cells be present होते हैं. So D square M I B means dicot dorsi ventral leaf होती है. Monocot leaf is isobilateral and bulliform cells are present in monocot leaf. So epidermis stomata यहाँ monocot leaf में stomata are present on both the surfaces. दोनों ही surfaces epidermis की दोनों surfaces पे stomata प्रेजेंट होता है मीजोफिल यहाँ पे मोनोकॉट लीव में डिफ्रेंशिएटेड नहीं होता इन टू पैलिसीड एंड स्पॉन्जी पैरन काइमा एज इट वॉज इन डाइकॉट लीव नाउ वैस्क्यूलर बंडल इज इन इट इज सिमिलर इन साइज ड्यू टू पैरल विनेशन जो पैरल uh, विनेशन की वजह से जितने वैस्क्यूलर बंडल हैं वो सब सिमिलर साइज के होते हैं क्योंकि मोनोकॉट में पैरल विनेशन होती है एंड वेन्स का साइज ऑलमोस्ट सेम होता है नाउ इन ग्रासेज ग्रासेज में जो एड एक्सिल एपिडोमिस होती है मीन्स द अपर एपिडोमिस दे मॉडिफाइड इंटू लार्ज एम टी कलरलेस सेल्स वो लार्ज एम टी कलरलेस सेल्स में मॉडिफाई हो जाते हैं दे आर नोन एज बुलिफॉर्म सेल्स नाउ दीज बुलिफॉर्म सेल्स वेन दे आर टर्ज जब ये बुलिफॉर्म सेल्स टर्ज होते हैं तो लीव सर्फिस एक्सपोज हो जाता है एंड वेन दे आर फ्लैसिड जब ये फ्लैसिड हो जाते हैं देन दे कॉज द इनवर्ड कर्लिंग ऑफ लीव ताकि वॉटर का लॉस ना हो so this is very important what happens in grasses the ad axial epidermal cells means jo upper epidermis ke cells hain wo large empty colorless cells mein modify ho jate hain known as bulliform cells jab ye bulliform cells turgid hote hain then leaf surface exposed ho jata hai and when they are flaccid to ye inward curling of leaf cause karte hain which helps to prevent water loss now uh, we'll talk about another topic that is secondary growth सेकेंडरी ग्रोथ में जो टिश्यूज इन्वॉल्व होते हैं वो होते हैं लेटरल मेरिस्टम वैस्कुलर कैम्बियम और कॉर्क कैम्बियम वैस्कुलर कैम्बियम वो कैम्बियम होता है जो प्राइमरी जाइलम और प्राइमरी फ्लोएम के बीच में प्रेजेंट होता है सो वैस्कुलर कैम्बियम में वील स्टडी अबाउट इंट्रा फैसिकुलर कैम्बियम और इंटर फैसिकुलर कैम्बियम जो कैम्बियम प्राइमरी जाइलम और प्राइमरी फ्लोएम के बीच में प्रेजेंट होता है उसे हम इंट्रा फैसिकुलर कैम्बियम बोलते हैं एंड मेडुलरी मेडुलरी रे सेल्स जो इंफ्रा इंट्रा फैसिकुलर कैम्बियम को ज्वाइन करती हैं वो मेरिस्टमेटिक हो जाती हैं और वो फिर 
डिवाइड करके दे स्टार्ट फॉर्मिंग इंटरफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम तो इंटरफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम बनने की वजह से एक रिंग फॉर्म हो जाती है बाय इंट्रा एंड इंटरफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम सो आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज इंट्राफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम एंड इंटरफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम जब प्राइमरी जाइलम और प्राइमरी फ्लोएम के बीच में कैम्बियम रिंग प्रेजेंट होती है उसे हम इंट्राफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम बोलते हैं और जब इंट्राफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम में जो मेडिलरी रे सेल्स होते हैं वो एक साथ डिवाइड करना स्टार्ट करते हैं तो वो एक रिंग फॉर्म कर देते हैं दैट इज इंटरफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम सो दिस रिंग इज फॉर्म बाय इंट्रा एंड इंटरफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम नाउ एक्टिविटी ऑफ कैम्बियल रिंग कैम्बियम रिंग एक्टिव हो जाती है और वो सेल्स uh, की कटिंग स्टार्ट कर देती है जो uh, पिथ की तरफ वो कटिंग स्टार्ट करना शुरू करती है वो मेच्योर होके सेकेंडरी जाइलम फॉर्म कर देते हैं एंड दो कट ऑफ टू वर्ड्स और जो सेल्स पेरीफेरी की तरफ कट ऑफ होते हैं वो मेच्योर होके सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम बन जाते हैं दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ये कैम्बियम रिंग जो फॉर्म हुई बाय इंटरफेसिकुलर एंड इंट्राफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम ये जब एक्टिव होती है ये सेल्स की कटिंग स्टार्ट कर देती है एंड जो सेल्स पिथ की तरफ कट ऑफ होते हैं वो मेच्योर हो जाते हैं पिथ मीन सेंटर की तरफ कट ऑफ होते हैं वो सेकेंडरी जाइलम फॉर्म कर देते हैं और जो पेरीफेरी यानी बाहर की तरफ कट ऑफ होते हैं वो सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम फॉर्म करते हैं नाउ कैम्बियम जनरली एक्टिव होता है ज्यादा एक्टिव होता है इनर साइड पे देन द आउटर साइड और इनर साइड पे पिच की कटिंग uh, हो रही है तो क्या बन रहा था सेकेंडरी जाइलम तो जब ये कैम्बियम इनर साइड पे ज्यादा एक्टिव होता है और इनर साइड की कटिंग पे वो सेकेंडरी जाइलम फॉर्म कर रहा है तो अल्टीमेटली क्या होगा सेकेंडरी जाइलम विल बी मोर प्रोड्यूस द सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम मतलब सेकेंडरी जाइलम का फॉर्मेशन ज्यादा होगा दिस इज द रीजन कि जब कैम्बियम रिंग एक्टिव होती है वो सेल्स की कटिंग स्टार्ट कर देती है एंड जब वो uh, जो कटिंग पिथ की तरफ या सेंटर की तरफ इनर साइड होती है तो वो मिच्योर होकर सेकेंडरी जाइलम फॉर्म हो जाते हैं और जो सेल्स की कटिंग बाहर की तरफ पेरी साइड की तरफ होती है सो दे मेच्योर इन फॉर्म सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम नाउ कैम्बियम की टेंडेंसी ये होती है दैट वो इनर साइड पे ज्यादा एक्टिव होता है तो इसका मतलब ज्यादा से ज्यादा कटिंग होगी इनर साइड पे तो ज्यादा सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम बनेगा और सेकेंडरी जाइलम बनेगा और सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम कम बनेगा सो दैट इज वाई सेकेंडरी जाइलम इज प्रोड्यूस मोर देन सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम नाउ प्राइमरी और सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम गेट्स क्रश्ड ड्यू टू कंटिन्यूड फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सेकेंडरी जाइलम सेकेंडरी जाइलम की कंटिन्यूस फॉर्मेशन की वजह से प्राइमरी और सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम क्रश हो जाते हैं वेर एज जो प्राइमरी जाइलम है वो इंटैक्ट रहता है एट द सेंटर मीन्स सेकेंडरी जाइलम के ज्यादा और कंटिन्यूस फॉर्मेशन की वजह से प्राइमरी और सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम पे तो फर्क पड़ता है बट जो प्राइमरी जाइलम है वो सेंटर पे इंटैक्ट पोजिशन में तभी भी अवेलेबल रहता है सो दिस इज हाउ इन दिस डायग्राम यूल बी एबल टू सी कैसे कैम्बियम रिंग बन रही है दिस इज वेयर वैस्क्यूलर बंडल्स आर अरेंज इन अ रिंग एंड ये वैस्क्यूलर बंडल्स रिंग में अरेंज है जिससे डायकॉट स्टेम में हो रहे थे नाउ दिस इज फ्लोएम दिस इज जाइलम और फ्लोएम और जाइलम के बीच में ये कैम्बियम की रिंग प्रेजेंट है नाउ दिस कैम्बियम रिंग दैट इज प्रेजेंट बिटवीन जाइलम एंड फ्लोएम दैट वी एड्रेस एज इसे हम बोलते हैं इंट्रा फैसिकुलर कैम्बियम ओके नाउ इन दी अदर डायग्राम वी कैन सी कि ये इंट्रा फैसिकुलर कैम्बियम में क्या हुआ मेडिलरी रेस के सेल्स ने मेरिस्टमेटिक हो गए एंड दिस स्टार्ट डिवाइडिंग तो एक रिंग फॉर्म एक लेयर फॉर्म कर दी वो भी कैम्बियम फॉर्म करने लगे आपस में एंड देन व्हाट हैपन कि इंटरफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम और इंट्राफेसिकुलर कैम्बियम की वजह से एक रिंग फॉर्म हो गई एंड दिस इज नोन एज द कैम्बियम रिंग और ये कैम्बियम रिंग इनर साइड की तरफ ज्यादा एक्टिव होती है देन द आउटर साइड और इसी वजह से सेकेंडरी जाइलम का फॉर्मेशन ज्यादा होता है देन द सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम और सेकेंडरी जाइलम के कंटिन्यूस फॉर्मेशन की वजह से प्राइमरी और सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम क्रश हो जाते हैं जो प्राइमरी जाइलम है वो इंटैक्ट रहता है नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट कॉर्क कैम्बियम जैसे जैसे प्लांट की गर्थ या ट्री की गर्थ इंक्रीज करती है इट इज ड्यू टू द एक्टिविटी ऑफ वैस्कुलर कैम्बियम वैस्कुलर कैम्बियम की एक्टिविटी की वजह से जैसे जैसे प्लांट की विथ इंक्रीज करती है कॉर्टेक्स की लेयर और एपिडोमल लेयर वो ब्रेक कर जाती हैं और उनको रिप्लेसमेंट रिक्वायर्ड होती है बाय प्रोटेक्टिव लेयर जस्ट ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड आई एम रिपीटिंग एज द गर्थ इंक्रीजेज जैसे जैसे प्लांट की गर्थ इंक्रीज करती है किसकी एक्टिविटी की वजह से वैस्कुलर कैम्बियम की एक्टिविटी की वजह से तो जो कॉटेक्स और एपिडर्मल लेयर हैं 
एपिडर्मिस की लेयर है वो ब्रेक करना स्टार्ट करती है एंड दे रिक्वायर रिप्लेसमेंट उन्हें रिप्लेसमेंट की जरूरत होती है कि कोई एक प्रोटेक्टिव लेयर उन्हें रिप्लेस करे सो so, जो मेरिस्टमेटिक टिश्यूज होते हैं कॉल्ड कॉर्ड कैम्बियम और फेलोजन दे डेवलप इन कॉटेक्स रीजन सो मेरिस्टमेटिक टिश्यूज कॉर्ड कैम्बियम या फेलोजन कॉटेक्स रीजन में डेवलप होते हैं एंड दे कट ऑफ सेल्स ऑन बोथ साइड्स और वो दोनों साइड uh, में इनर साइड एंड आउटर साइड में सेल की कटिंग स्टार्ट कर देते हैं सो आउटर सेल्स डिफ्रेंशिएट करते हैं कॉर्ड या फेलम में और इनर सेल्स डिफ्रेंशिएट करते हैं इन टू सेकेंडरी कॉटेक्स और फेलोडम सो फेलम फेलोजन एंड फेलोडर्म टुगेदर कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द पेरीडम और ये ही पेरीडर्म होता है जो वो स्ट्रॉन्ग विथ वाली बार्क आपको दिखाई देती है ऑफ द ट्री दैट इज फेलम फेलोजन एंड फेलोडर्म सो नाउ ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इट अगेन कि एज द विथ और गर्थ ऑफ द ट्री इंक्रीजेस वैस्कुलर कैम्पियम की एक्टिविटी की वजह से तो कॉटेक्स एंड एपिडर्मिस की लेयर दे गेट्स ब्रोकन एंड रिक्वायर रिप्लेसमेंट की कोई प्रोटेक्टिव लेयर उसे रिप्लेस करे सो जो मेरेस्टमेटिक टिश्यू है कॉर्ड कैम्बियम या फेलोजन वो डेवलप होता है कॉटेक्स एंड वो दोनों साइड्स में इनर साइड्स और आउटर साइड्स में सेल की कटिंग स्टार्ट करता है सो ये जो कॉर्ड कैम्बियम है इसे हम फेलोजन बोलते हैं सो आउटर सेल्स को ये कट करके कटिंग करता है तो दे डिफ्रेंशिएट इन टू कॉर्क That is phylum, and inner cells differentiate करते हैं secondary cortex that is phylloderm में. So sequence क्या हो जाता है phylum, phylogen and phylloderm. And these three together constitute the periderm that is protective layer. और ये तीन मिलके protective layer periderm form करते हैं. Now the point to note that cord cells impermeable होते हैं water के लिए क्योंकि वहाँ पे sewerin का deposition होता है. So cork cells are impermeable to water due to sebarin deposition and जो secondary cortex के cells होते हैं they are made up of parenchyma. So basically ज़्यादातर जगह पे हमें parenchyma cells observe हो रहे हैं. Now the bark. Bark includes tissues which are exterior or outside the vascular cambium. Vascular cambium के bark का जितना भी tissue होता है उसे हम bark consider करते हैं. So bark means periderm and secondary phloem. पेरीडर्म और सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम मिलके बार्क को कॉन्स्टिट्यूट करते हैं पेरीडर्म इज वॉट द प्रोटेक्टिव लेयर विच इज मेड अप ऑफ फेलम फेलोजन और फेलोडर्म और सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम जो लेटर फ्लोएम डेवलप होता है दैट इज ओनर सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम ये सब मिलके बार्क कॉन्स्टिट्यूट करते हैं दिस वन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि बार्क इज वॉट द पेरीडर्म एंड सेकेंडरी फ्लोएम ऑल द टिश्यू एक्सटीरियर और आउटसाइड द वैस्क्यूलर कैम्पियम Now, bark which is formed in early season, उसे हम early या soft bark बोलते हैं, and bark formed in the end of the season that is known as late or hard bark. So uh, this was all about bark. Now talking about lenticels. Cord cambium जो uh, phylum था, instead of cutting uh, phylogen, sorry. Instead of cutting cork cells, cork cells तो को बाहर की तरफ cut करने की बजाय it cut off parenchyma cells on the outer sides. So cork cambium instead of cutting the the cork cells on the outside, it starts cutting off parenchyma cells on inside. So इसकी वजह से epidermis rupture हो जाती है and it forms lens shape openings. So जो epidermis layer होती है वो rupture हो जाती है and lens shape opening cause करती है जिसे हम lenticels बोलते हैं. Lenticels gaseous exchange में हेल्प करते हैं लेंटिसल्स आर जस्ट लाइक स्टोमेटा जो गैशेस एक्सचेंज में हेल्प करते हैं ओपनिंग्स होते हैं लेकिन ये बार्क पे प्रेजेंट होते हैं एंड दे आकर मोस्टली इन वुडी ट्रीज एंड दे आर मेड अप ऑफ कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री सेल्स तो जैसे स्टोमेटा गार्ड सेल्स के बने होते हैं लेंटिसल्स आर मेड अप ऑफ कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री सेल्स एंड स्टोमेटा प्रेजेंट इन लीव सो लेंटिसल्स आर फाउंड इन वुडी ट्रीज इन देर बार्क एंड बोथ ऑफ देम हेल्प इन गैशेज एक्सचेंज नाउ स्प्रिंग वुड एंड ऑटम वुड कैम्बियम जो है वो बहुत एक्टिव होता है स्प्रिंग सीजन में एंड इट प्रोड्यूस लार्ज नंबर ऑफ जायलम एलिमेंट्स ज़्यादातर ज़्यादा नंबर ऑफ जायलम एलिमेंट्स प्रोड्यूस करता है जिसमें वेसल्स आर हैविंग वाइडर कैविटीज वेसल्स की जो कैविटी होती है वो वाइड होती है सो ऐसे वुड को हम स्प्रिंग वुड बोलते हैं एंड ऑटम वुड में कैम्बियम लेस एक्टिव हो जाता है दैट इज इन विंटर एंड इट प्रोड्यूस फ्यू नंबर ऑफ जायलम एलिमेंट जायलम एलिमेंट्स बहुत कम बनाते हैं और जो वेसल्स होते हैं उनकी कैविटी बहुत नारो होती है तो सच टाइप ऑफ वुड फॉर्म दैट इज ऑटम वुड स्प्रिंग वुड लाइटर इन कलर होता है और उसकी डेंसिटी कम होती है वेर एज ऑटम वुड डार्कर इन कलर होता है इट हैज हायर डेंसिटी नाउ 
Now in this diagram, you can see कि uh, autumn wood और spring wood present है and uh, alternate rings की form में ये present होते हैं So जो spring wood और autumn wood है वो uh, tree के bark में present होते हैं as alternate concentric rings. और यही मिल के annual rings बनाते हैं They together make the annual rings. And annual rings on a cut stem, it is used for estimating the age of the tree. अगर किसी cut stem को आप observe करेंगे तो उसमें जो annual rings होती हैं that is useful in estimating and determining. Mining the age of the tree. वो tree की age determine करने में help करते हैं. And the formula is radius divided by average ring width. So this is the radius. ये r है. This is the radius r. And average ring width. हर ring की जो average width है, उसके according उसको हम divide कर देते हैं. Age is equal to radius divided by average ring width. And we get the age in years. That how many years the tree is how many years old. So this is how we get it. Now we'll have a talk about hardwood and sapwood. जो इनम इनर पार्ट होता है सेकेंडरी जाइलम का सेकेंडरी जाइलम का तो जो इनर पार्ट होता है that is dark in color due to deposition of gums, resins and tannins. जो सेकेंडरी जाइलम का इनर मोस्ट पार्ट है वो dark होता है क्योंकि उसमें gums, resins और tannins का deposition हो जाता है उसे हम hardwood बोलते हैं और जो सेकेंडरी जाइलम का peripheral part होता है वो light in color होता है and which is known as sapwood. So कभी अगर आपने कोई cut portion of bark देखा होगा तो you have seen the darker one inside and the lighter color outside so ye darker color that is hardwood and the lighter one that is sapwood and hardwood basically mechanical support provide karta hai it is hard durable and it provide resistance to insect and it is uh, this sapwood helps in conduction of water and minerals from the roots to the leaves now that was all for today thank you